Welcome to my presentation. My name is Amir Reza Mahbud, uh, and I'm an, an industrial PhD student from Medical University of Vienna and Tissue Gnostic. And today I'm going to present my paper, which is a two-stage unit algorithm for segmentation of nuclei in HES stained tissues. So in my presentation, first of all, uh, we would have a like, brief introduction about the importance of nuclei segmentation. Then I will introduce the data set that we, uh, that we used in your project. Then I will explain about the method, the pre-processing part, the main methodology part, and the post-processing. And then we will see the results and conclusion. And also we will see the possible ideas that we can use as an extension of this set. So we are in the digital pathology conference, so I think most of us already know the importance of nuclei segmentation. We can consider it as a key step in computational pathology. And when you have this like segmentation masks, you can actually extract different information, uh, such as nuclei density estimation or average uh, nuclei size and so on. And later on, you can use this information for different applications, such as ca cancer grading and uh, other applications. So in order to perform instance segmentation or nuclei segmentation in HS stained images, one uh, approach could be manual segmentation uh, by experts. But as we know, this uh, approach could be time consuming, objective, and also it could be a complex procedure. So there are many methods in the literature that tries to perform the same job for us in a semi-automatic or fully automatic computerized method. And between them, machine learning based algorithm and especially deep learning based algorithm are among the best. And uh, we also you, uh, propose a novel approach in this paper to perform nuclear segmentation uh, based on deep learning approaches. But before I go through the uh, methodological part, uh, I just want to uh, briefly introduce the data set that we use in this project. Uh, we use one of the biggest public available data set, which was introduced by Kumar in 2017. And basically, this data set uh, include 30 images that were like small patches that were extracted from whole slide images. And you can see some uh, example of uh, yeah, some example of this data set in this uh, slide, and they were coming from different hospitals and uh, from different patients, so they had like uh, large uh, variability. And the si size of each of these individual small patches uh, was 1,000 by, by 1,000 pixel. And here is just uh, more detail about this data set. So as you can see from these 30 images, we had like six images for the breast uh, tissue. We had six images for kidney and so on. And then we divided these 30 images to 16 images for training the algorithm and 14 images for validation. Exactly in the same way that was introduced in Kumar paper. And uh, uh, by dividing this data set in this uh, manner, we could compare our results at the end with the reference paper and with other algorithm. So here is the overview of uh, our method. So as you can see, it has different parts. So I'm going to briefly explain each part. So I start with the pre-processing. We apply these four pre-processing steps on the images. First of all, we resize the images from 1,000 pixels to 1,024 pixels. Then we normalize the intensity values between 0 and 1. Then we apply a stain normalization technique, which was proposed by Masenko et al. Uh, uh, in their paper in 2009. And basically what we tried to do in this step was to uh, match the staining separation vectors of the input image and reference image. And uh, here we can see that an example of this. So here we have the input image and we have the reference image. And after applying uh, stain normalization, we will have the stain normalized image which has the color scheme of the reference image. Of course, one problem that we had was how we can choose the best reference image to perform a stain normalization. And to do that, uh, actually, we plot the histogram of the nuclei and the background. And then we chose uh, the image as the reference image, which has the most distinction between the nuclei distribution and background distribution. And finally, we modified the provided ground truths. And what I mean by modifying the ground truths, uh, we apply these four steps. So on the left, 
on picture A, you can see the provided ground truths. First, we binarize these ground truths, as you can see in picture B. Then we remove the touching borders, as you can see in picture C. And finally, we apply an erosion morphological operation to have better distinction between touching objects, as you can see in picture D. And now we come uh, to the main methodology part. So as you may remember from the uh, topic of the paper, we call it the two-stage unit algorithm. So this is the first stage. In the first stage, we apply a modified unit, arch uh, unit architecture, and we train the algorithm with the binary labels. We had four max pooling layer in the extracting path, and we had four transport, transpose convolutional layer in the uh, expanding path, and we use a combination of binary cross entropy and dice loss as the loss function. And also, we apply some augmentation uh, to increase our training size. And also, you can see the hyperparameters that uh, that we use in this uh, stage. And after applying or training the model, uh, training this first stage unit model, we can get a result like this. So on the left, you can see the original image. On the middle, we have the ground truths, and on the right, we have the prediction results by this. Uh, unit, the general semantic segmentation performance of the method is quite good, but as you can see, we have this problem of touching objects. And, uh, and uh, to solve this problem, we train another unit with very similar structure, uh, like the first stage unit, but here, instead of training the algorithm uh, with binary labels, we train the algorithm with the distance maps. And of course, because we are dealing with the regression problem in the, this stage, we change the loss function to the mean square error, and the rest of the parameters are almost the same. And then, uh, and here is just, uh, I put this slide to show you what's the difference between these binary labels and the distance map, as you can see. And as you can see in the distance map, we have a clear separation between the objects, and then we can use this information for separating the touching objects. After training this model in two sequential steps, and uh, we use the results of both of them to perform our final instance segmentation results. So first, we apply a Gaussian smoothing filter on the results of the second stage unit. And the kernel size of this Gaussian smoothing filter were determined by the results of the first stage unit. Basically, if we have like bigger average cell size, we uh, apply a kernel size with bigger we apply a Gaussian smoothing filter with bigger kernel. And then from this uh, modified uh, distance map, we find the local maximas, and then we use them as the seed point for the watershed algorithm. And finally, for background determination, again, we use the results of the first stage unit. And we also apply two sample post-processing steps, which were the filling the holes and also removing very small objects from the segmentation mask. And finally, we come to the results. So I, in this slide, I put the results for all those 14 validation images. So there are many numbers. So I just focus on this last line, which is like the over, uh, average overall results. We use uh, three evaluation indexes, like the DICE score, the F1 score, and also the aggregate Jacquard index. Between them, aggregate Jacquard index is more important because it's sensitive to the semantic and instance segmentation performance at the same time. And we also compare our method with three other algorithms, with the unit, with the reference paper, which was uh, proposed by Kumar, and also with a recently published paper which was based on a single deep regression model. So as you can see from these numbers, especially here, we had between five to seven improvement compared to the first two models and also around 1% improvement compared to the single deep regression model. With almost the same approach, we also participated in one of the Mikais challenge. Uh, so in this challenge, actually, there were like 37 uh, participants, and based on aggregate Jacquard index, they had the performance between 13% to 69%, or algorithm uh, without any ensemble, I have to emphasize on that, uh, that uh, got 66%, and that was our mistake in this competition, because usually when you apply uh, some sort of ensembling, you can get 2 or 3% improvement. So in order to... Uh, actually improve the results, we can apply different kind of ensembling, which are, you can change some hyperparameters and then use different fusion schemes to uh, improve or boost your performance. We're also planning to 
uh, see if it's possible to uh, actually to uh, train these two sequential models in one single model by somehow modifying the uh, loss function and also we think it's better to apply this state normalization technique as an augmentation technique instead of using it as a pre-processing steps because we always have this problem of choosing the best reference image. And these are the most important references that we use in our project and basically that was my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Any questions? Yes. Um, so it's interesting you're using the distance. Um, so you compute the distance from the center of the cell to the yes. edge of it, or the edge yes, of the yes, other yes. cell? Yeah, from the ground truth, we could calculate the distance map. Oh, from the ground truth. Yeah. And, um, and when you combine it with your other unit, how do you base your decision? I'm sorry, I didn't get that point. Like, how do you? Um... Yeah. So basically, maybe I can go here. So here, actually, we got the results of this distance map, of the predicted distance map. But actually, they were quite noisy. So in order to make them a little bit smoother, we used the results of the original unit, of the first stage unit. So what I mean here is that we calculate the we estimated the average nuclei size, we can easily calculate it, and then we apply a Gaussian smoothing filter on the results of this second stage unit to have like more smoother distance map. And then we use the watershed algorithm and so on. Thank you. Yeah, uh, very good work. So I have a question on about why you need to apply the watershed segmentation because this is overlap, uh, it's over segmentation, right? So when you get some result, you use watershed segmentation, you're going to get, um, maybe sometimes the result may go getting worse. Mm -hmm. So what's the reason you use watershed here? Thank uh, you. Because uh, actually what we had from the second stage uh, results is something like this. So actually we calculate these local maximas the optimal local maximums, because the problem of the original watershed algorithm is that uh, maybe you, you find like uh, many false positive local maximums, but when you apply this distance regression, you can really find or very good uh, candidates for these local maximums, and then you can use it for the watershed algorithm, and it gives you more or less pretty good results. One question there. Same question. Any other questions? Okay, we have time, I have one more. You used the normalization method by Machenko. Did you perhaps investigate if it added something to the system? Did you train a model without it to see? Yes, it actually it worked. Uh, and I put on a slide here, uh, because we didn't have time, just to make, uh, make it more cl clear how we choose a reference image. So you can see that we plot the histogram of all images. This is just for the first 15 images, but we actually calculated for, for all of them. And for example, here you can see when you have a clear distinction between the nuclei uh, distribution and the background distribution, you can use it as a proper or good candidate for the reference image. And it gives us uh, like a better segmentation results at the end.